Yeah, Michelle and I are cleaning up the house, cleaning up our closets, doing some things, and I have to come across this old, nice little jacket that I bought years ago from up north to keep me warm when I was about 308 pounds. And uh, now that I'm 193, I think, you can see the, the difference <laughs> in the arms, too. I guess my shoulders have shrunk, too, because this used to be over here like that. It's a nice jacket. I don't think they can take in this much. But uh, back in the days, you losing can, weight, feeling great. You can fit one more human being in that. You can fit that. can close it. Okay, good morning. For all uh, you two viewers out there, we hope you're uh, waking up from a nice sleep on a nice, beautiful Sunday morning. Um, November, what we got? Seven today, babe? Seven. November 7, uh, 7.30 a.m. Actually, it's 6.30 a.m. We set the clocks back, so we have to adjust our clocks. Anyways, uh, what we have today going on in uh, Johnny Bravo's cooking emporium, <laughs> Michelle and I are going to put together uh, what is known as a keto friendly meatloaf. This is my second one, and uh, the first one came up pretty damn good. Huh, Michelle? It's pretty good. Tasted really great. Let's see Michelle's expression. Was it good or not? It's good. Yummy. Better than the regular meatloaf. Yummy. Well, that greasy, you know, unhealthy, non-keto meatloaf back in the day, of the day, was pretty damn good. My father used to make it pretty good, but... Uh, I used to, uh, you know, we used to enjoy it. It was great. But anyways, today we're going to start off with the ingredients. Then we'll break the segment off while I chop up things and get it prepped. And then we'll come back on, do a segment two, segment three, and then a final segment. So you people can stop it in between segments if you want to assimilate the same type of um, meal for, uh, for a good Sunday. If you want to gather up the things you might have to make it in the future. And uh, introduce your family to a healthier way of eating meatloaf. That'd be great. So uh, right now, initially, what we have, what you're going to need is, okay, some organic, grass-fed uh, ground beef. We got uh, 16 ounces here shown, which should be enough. Me, Michelle, and I, just two of us here in the house, so we don't need too much. Uh, we have a small glass baking pan, and uh, this is enough meatloaf when we get it all together for us for a couple of days, you know, to make, uh, you know, some uh, leftovers and all that. This is the 85-15 fat. Uh, try to get the 80-20, add a little more fat, induce a little more fat into the diet for the keto. But uh, this is what they had available over at uh, Aldi, so we picked it up. It's not too bad. Prices are usually a little over five dollars, under six dollars for a pound. You can see it's got good quality. And then uh, you're gonna need a a medium-sized onion chopped up, an egg, uh, chopped up green pepper, you know, a small one, nothing extravagant. Then uh, what we have to add to the mix. This is my own little addition. Is uh, this is bread, keto bread. It's in a form of a a wrap. It's made of a uh, Egg and uh, cauliflower, I believe. Very low carbs. I think one little sheet, very thin too. One little sheet is like 30 calories, which the calories are not a big deal when you're talking keto. But I'm just saying it's it's not a uh, overzealous, uh, over calorie type product. We're gonna chop that up and uh, mix that in for to take place of some of our bread to add moisture. Um, we might even introduce. We might. Some of our organic baby spinach, chop it up real fine, just throw it in there. Uh, even though it's going to cook out in the oven, at least it has some dark green leafy, leafy, leafy yeah, vitamins. A little uh, coconut almond milk is just to kind of uh, coagulate everything and everything, uh, you know, um, to be soften up for the mix, you know. And the ingredients, as far as uh, seasonings, I just put all these out. I put them in as I as I go. You know how I feel. But we're going to need some minced garlic. 
And this is the one that's in uh, extra virgin oil. We're going to need some pink Himalayan salt. A little paprika, which is nice. Extra virgin olive oil, organic. Some cilantro. I usually throw a little bit of that in there. It doesn't hurt, you know. Some ground peppercorn pepper. Organic garlic powder. Even though we have the garlic here, I like to put a little bit of garlic powder too. Now, chili powder is unique. I've been using this for a while, organic chili powder. It's pretty nice. It adds a little bit of a um, an extra zing to the meat, if you will. So I put a little bit of that in there. And actually, some curry powder is actually nice too for enhancing the flavors. And of course, we always have to have some crushed red pepper. And then... Again, to take the place of bread and grainy type um, substance within our meatloaf, we're going to utilize pork rinds. So the pork rinds is all you really need, but we're going to add a little bit of this um, egg, egg type um, cauliflower bread also. Um, that's it for all the ingredients. Um, if there's something I forgot, I'll mention it later, but I'm going to... Prep all these, get them all finely cut, you know, minced up. And then uh, we're also going to show you a way how to crunch up the pork rinds. We have some already prepared in this bag. You got a little viewport there so you can see as you go your progress. But we take them, we lay the bag flat. We lay the bag, get my vitamins out of the way. We lay the bag flat, we grab a... Uh, tenderizer and we uh, crunch them crunch them up in the bag it doesn't make a mess the bag's pretty strong it doesn't rip open the little crunches like that all along the bag of course this bag has just a small amount in it we're gonna open up the new bag but I just thought I'd use this as a uh, demonstration and what happens is you just slide it forward you can see if there's any more pieces left and uh, when you get it like that pretty fine then you can use it for the meatloaf. I just wanted to mention we also we're gonna add some of our grass-fed cow, uh, pure Irish butter. We like this product; it's pretty good and uh, works well with the keto, you know. Um, so what we did we took a little chunk off, maybe about two tablespoons worth. We melted it in our mic. Now we're just gonna add it again for good coagulation. We have to add all of it, and uh, we shall set the oven while we were away between segment two and three, and we uh, have it at 360 for uh, about 80 minutes. We'll monitor it after about an hour and 10 minutes, that last 10, 15 minutes or so, make sure the top doesn't get all too hard, you know, we don't want to aggressively make it all brown on the top. As you can see, it's very, very, uh, the, uh, consistency, consistency, excuse me, is, uh, just right. It's a loaf, like a bread, but it's very moist. It's got good value. It's got good portion, proportion, as far as the green and the onion, you know, the, the, uh, green pepper and the onion and the, uh, the bread content. Well, I shouldn't use the word bread, but the simulated bread. Keto friendly meatloaf. Like we said in segment one, we had uh, an itemized list of all the things that we're going to utilize today. And here they are, just to reiterate. And uh, we have uh, one beaten egg. We have the Keto uh, wrap bread, egg and uh, cauliflower wrap bread, chopped up fine, thanks to my wife Michelle. We have the pork loins, all chopped down, you know, utilizing that tenderizing hammer while they're in the bag, like I mentioned earlier in segment one. We have our garlic, 
minced garlic. We have our one pound of uh, 85-15% uh, grass-fed organic hamburger. We have our medium cut uh, onion, organic onion with uh, the organic uh, green pepper, bell pepper. So we're ready to go. Shall grab the camera and we can roll. We're going to start adding some of our ingredients. In the bowl we have the hamburger. We're going to add the green pepper. We're going to moderate. We're going to make sure we don't add too much. We want flavor. We don't want to overburden the flavor. Even though we cut a little extra. I'm gonna say we can put that all. We get away with all that. Bell pepper is pretty good, especially when it's cooked in a meal with an oven. As far as the oven goes, you want to put it like about three, three fifty to three seventy five. Your oven, and uh, let them look at that, babe. That's the proportion we're using for two people for a one pound. Um, a meatloaf made with one pound, 16 ounce of uh, hamburger. We don't want to overburden it. Just want to give it some delightful taste. And we have our, uh, I'll also put the pork loins in. I guess that's enough right there. As far as the proportions, as you can see on camera, they're not that much. They're just a little bit of everything. You want a breakdown of the, this is the garlic we're putting in, you know, a couple pinches of garlic, minced garlic, then we're going to uh, put in a little bit of these taco crust, it wasn't taco, but I call it taco, it's just a wrap made of cauliflower and egg. get away with all that yeah it's like two slices worth two of those wrap slices is what we utilize for that it's hard to tell when it's all chopped up but that's what we utilize utilize for that as far as proportion wise then we're gonna mosey over here and we have a small kitchen so it's great for us but when you're preparing something it's I'm gonna add our one egg, organic, pastured, uh, cage free, all that good stuff. Eggs, that's all we buy. We don't eat any more of the, uh, we don't consume any more of the uh, standard eggs. That's why we don't go to restaurants anymore and stuff like that. So, I'm going to add a little bit of this. Coconut almond milk. That doesn't have to be coconut. It can just be, you know, uh, um, plain. We just happen to use this for our coffee and some stuff, some baking. When we bake like uh, muffins, keto muffins and stuff like that. We like the coconut taste. But As far as how much we're going to put in, we're going to wing it here with you as our guest. I'm going to assume for now I'm going to put... About a, just under a half, let's say half a cup, just to kind of coagulate and mix everything in, you know. All right, now you're gonna have that olive oil in there too, that's gonna help with the uh, how much olive oil would you say? Oh, about a, about a teaspoon and a half, It'd be okay. Now we have these, uh. Crushed peppers, organic. We're just gonna lightly throw about. My name is Michelle. There you go. There you go. Just a little couple dashes of that. Give it some some bang. Same thing with the curry. Couple. About four little. 
all the little pinches of that. We got the chili, which I love very much. Nice. We're not going to overburden anything. Though. We're just going to... There you go. Six pinches of that. Now, we already put the garlic earlier, but this powdered garlic just kind of helps everything, uh, you know. There you go. A couple little pinches of that. And we have our... This is not organic, this pepper. We didn't notice when we bought it, but we're going to get away with it for today. This thing doesn't really work that great. This thing doesn't really work that uh, efficiently. So you have to, it looks like I'm putting a, hunch, a whole bunch of pepper, but really, it comes out of it really lightly. So, pepper's a good thing, anyways. As you can see, there's not that much in there after all that effort. <laughs> And we'll put a little bit of the cilantro flakes. Just add a little bit. There you go. A little bit in there. And I'm pink, pink Himalayan salt. This is another one that doesn't really put that much in it. You gotta kinda grind it in there a little bit. Two or three, four little, little uh, twists. We have a little paprika going in. This is not organic either. We're just trying to use up the remainder of it and then we'll buy the organic one. Which isn't going to hinder the taste at all. We just like to do everything organic. We look down and you can see uh, that's about maybe four or five little sprinkles of that. Oh, I think that's it for the seasonings, for the ingredients, the seasoning type ingredients. So now we can. Break it up. I could have broke up the meat earlier, but it's uh, thawed out from last night. No, actually, it wasn't never frozen. I'm sorry. This is the one we kept uh, out of the... When we bought it at the store a couple of days ago, we kept it in the refrigerator so it could thaw out. And Actually, it wasn't frozen. Now that I think about it. Whatever. So you see, just kind of mix it in there. It's coagulating nice. It's mixing in nice. It's not all dry, and you know it's actually mixing together real well, real well. What do you think, Michelle? What do you So we're going to take our. Standard size loaf, glass loaf pan, meatloaf pan, bread pan, cake pan, whatever. And we're going to dig in. We're going to grab our, I already uh, lubed, the, lubed the pan up with some of the uh, um, extra virgin olive oil, the sides and everything, so nothing sticks. You know, we don't want any embarrassing things when we're trying to pull our meatloaf from the pan and it, half of it stays inside. We don't want that. Uh, looks like a good proportion of it. Get it in position. Kind of. What we're doing now is we're kind of forcing all the air out of the the meat. It's so usually some air pockets. We don't want to have air pockets, you know. Nice and. I'm gonna take my little fork. My trusty fork. We work it down. Get it nice and uniformly pressed in to position. Kind of like a, a mold. We're gonna mold it in. A lot of you made meatloaves in the past, so you know this 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 step is pretty easy. Not a big deal. But you got some guys out there that they find themselves single over all these years of being married. They find themselves single gentlemen now, and they like to divorce or widowed or whatever. And they like to make a meatloaf for their daughter or something like that. Or their kids to impress them when they come over on a Sunday or whatever. This would be a great thing for you guys to utilize as a hobby, a Sunday hobby. Cooking, cooking for the kids, cooking for the grandchildren, whatever. I'm sure they'll be proud to know that. Grandpa makes a kick-ass meatloaf. Wrap it up a little baby in a crib. Mmm. Let me show. There you go. Yeah, that was keep it from getting up. Yeah. 
taking out, right? Here you go. Look at that, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. And while we were gone, like waiting for the cheese to melt and get a little toasty, we took the liberty of making some homemade gravy, utilizing the uh, the juice from the actual baking pan from the meatloaf, along with, it made like about a quarter of a cup of juice, we poured it in, and then we, uh, we put some um, almond, flour. almond flour, thanks Michelle, some almond flour, we put some uh, chili powder, some min mince onions, some mushrooms, some uh, baby spinach chopped up fine just a little bit, uh, some uh, curry powder, some um, some of the salt we have, Himalayan salt, Himalayan pink salt, some pepper, a little tiny bit of additional butter, stir it up, and there it Find is. The Nice gravy. What we'll do, just to intense everybody, on a Sunday, is we'll add a little bit of the gravy over. Let it coagulate in there. Now, I really do love corn on the cob and mashed potatoes, but we won't be having that anymore in our diet since we are now ketosis. ketosis so, anyways... We paint that on like an artist. Yeah. That's the finished product. Well, Vincent Van Gogh on that bad boy. There it is. Now, I'll let it cool a minute. Just took it out. Make sure it's gonna. Sorry for the plastic fork. I just happened to grab it out of the drawer real quick. We save them for when Michelle goes to work. She can take them and use them. Don't have to worry about forgetting them on the chow hall on the canteen table or something but uh oh yeah it's free it's free and clear like an american citizen let me show free and clear oh yeah cut us a little piece get me a fork feed the wife oh yeah look at that now you could put some sugar-free um, with no um the bacon we have with no um, biotics you know uh, what do you call it you know the health healthy keto style bacon over the top too then put the cheese and the bacon will juice down for about 15 minutes into the meatloaf too but that's the end product Follow me up, Michelle. Follow me up to my mouth. Little, 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 little. There it is. Open the hatch doors. Cargo's coming in. Mm. Very moist. <laughs>